Good morning and welcome to our conference dedicated to Q1 results. Our agenda is quite traditional, starting with the highlights, so the macroeconomic environment, an overview of the financial results and a look forward. We will then take your questions. I would like to welcome everyone present here in the room. We have few participants and also everyone joining us online. I understand many of you are taking part in the IMPACT conference. We are not there because we are here with you. Let's begin. In Q1, our bank generated a solid net profit of 488 million zloty. This quarter brought continued efforts to address the Swiss franc loan risk. We set up 240 million additional provisions and we accelerated the pace of signing settlements with clients, a point we will discuss later on. In the past quarter, our income uh, lines improved across the board, especially our NFC and our FX uh, income. At the same time, the economic slowdown is a fact. We can see that in the activity of our clients and the volumes of lending which dropped in our retail operations. We maintained the lending volumes in corporate banking. We'll see what happens in the upcoming quarters. Our costs remained under control and even dropped quarter on quarter. They increased net of BFG year on year but well below inflation which is due to our reasonable efforts to maintain cost discipline quarter after quarter. Finally, last but not least, positive cost of risk. That is quite a unique highlight and I go back to what we stressed many times on prior occasions. The quality of our portfolio remains solid and has not deteriorated. Clearly, we are witnessing an economic slowdown, so it's hard to say how things will go, but uh, as at the end of Q1, this was a positive uh, highlight. Now, let's move on to our achievements in Q1 from the perspective of our four pillars. Uh, I'd like to uh, stress a few points, including dynamic growth of sustainable financing up by 42% year on year, 7.5 billion at the end of March. As you can see, we have specific strategic goals and we have the ambition to be a sustainable finance leader in Poland. We will work hard to build up and maintain our leading position. As for the next pillar, up. We continued to grow our digital channels. Our wealth management operation won a prestigious coveted award. It has for years been considered the best wealth management business in Poland. It is of strategic importance uh, to our uh, franchise. Finally, we grew the number of active SME and corporate clients as well as premium and wealth management clients. I'd like to stress that our strategy provides for selective smart development in those client segments which we consider to be the most prospective. We want to be the bank of first choice for our clients, a transactional bank, and we are looking for clients who will use us as a transactional bank for their portfolio. We've been innovating with Broker ID, the first solution of its kind based on authentic technology in the 
SME segment, we started using artificial intelligence in a smart and methodological way, in a responsible way. We are embarking on this journey. I believe banking has a long way to go here, but um, of course AI has become quite a buzzword due to chat GPT. I believe we will stay smart and reasonable rather than getting overly emotional about AI. As for the next pillar, together, uh, you can see some of our achievements on the slide. But I'd like to stress our initiative concerning, concerning the red skilling of our employees in IT. We have a program. 644 people have applied for the 35 positions available, so many of our responsible employees want to improve their qualifications and improve in IT to possibly uh, change gears on their career path. And we will be considering an expansion of that program to allow our, our colleagues uh, win new skills and improve now uh, their security in the job market. Now, concerning this picture, which is quite clear in and by itself, an increase in online or remote channel users and our uh, the users of our Go Mobile application. More and more of our clients have payment instruments on their mobile phones, using them instead of plastic. We've seen a strong increase in our Blick transactions. Uh, that's our national pride and a banking and technological success. So uh, our uh, digital banking is on an increase on a, in an uptrend. Now, another clear picture, as you can see, uh, the most important uh, highlights include strong growth in investment products quarter on quarter and year on year alike. This trend has become quite strong and clear. It is a positive trend. We've reported relatively high growth and we believe this trend will continue. As for mortgage loans, uh, don't be surprised by the 94% increase quarter on quarter because we started from a very low level. We are very selective in mortgage lending. So the volumes uh, in this segment are currently marginal. And this has continued to date. I've mentioned the increase in the number of active clients. It's uh, on the slide. As for our market shares, we have reported a minor decrease in lending. Uh, as I've said before, this drop is of no concern. We are a conservative bank, as you can see by looking at our cost of risk. So we do not want to compete with lending volumes, we will continue to pursue our rational policy and uh, monitoring uh, our lending volumes. As for deposits, our strategy provided for an increase of a liquidity buffer back in 2022. In Q1, we optimized the cost of our liquidity. As a result, we reported a deposit attrition, but the deposit base and the liquidity position are fully comfortable for us, so the decrease in the market share is of no concern to us. Let's have a look at the financial results. As you can see, our income increased quarter on quarter and year on year. I've mentioned our expenses net of the BFG contribution, we are happy to see that our cost discipline remains solid. Swiss franc loans have been a legacy um, burden for us. That is not a secret. We have been monitoring trends in the case law. There are some individual 
judgments that are positive for banks with quite reasonable justifications. So there's a glimmer of hope that uh, this um, follows from some overall reflection among Polish judges regarding cases where clients are claiming their agreements should be invalidated, agreements that have been uh, served for years. It is not the bank's fault that the FX rate of the Zloty to the Swiss franc has changed. And the net result has grown, as you can see on the slide. Our cost income ratio is very relevant. It dropped. It is not yet systemically satisfactory. The cost of credit risk is positive, as I said before, due to the release of some of our provisions, which will be discussed later on. Our net interest margin on assets has stabilized, which is, a, which is good news. The margin is not shrinking. We can see a positive trend impacting our revenue base. Our return on equity net ROE increased to 17%, which is above the cost of equity, cost of capital, a positive trend. Although after uh, several quarters, uh, well, this has not been seen in several quarters before. Net of the impact of credit holidays, uh, the uh, increase would be lower. In Q1, we adjusted by 11 million zlotys the provisions we set up for credit holidays. It is not a very significant item. So that's our introduction. Now let's have a look at the macroeconomic environment. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. It seems that the economy in Q1 reached a turning point. Inflation peaked and started to decrease. It seems that business activity will gradually improve. First things first, however, the data we can see when it comes to industry construction and retail clearly suggest that year on year GDP in Q1 shrank, but most of the available uh, forward-looking indicators suggest that the worst is behind us and the upcoming months and quarters will see an increase. What will support the outlook, especially regarding consumer spending, is the dropping inflation, which is driven by both lower inflation expectations as well as external factors such as lower uh, oil and gas prices, lower commodity prices and the base effect. So I think the upcoming months will see desinflation. As regards uh, factors of greater concern, domestically and factors that impact prices and are domestic in nature. We have not seen a breakthrough and core inflation has remained high above 12%. What does it mean for the monetary policy? The Polish Monetary Policy Council has not officially closed its uh, tightening cycle, but that will probably happen at the upcoming meetings of the Council. Lower inflation will prompt the Council to decide uh, to stop tightening the policy, but it is an open question when and how much the rates will first be cut in the coming months and quarters. One of the factors that should be underlined in the context of the financial and monetary conditions and the inflation or desinflation outlook is the strong appreciation of the Polish Zloty that has been taking place since mid-April. 
as in the case of inflation, in my mind, this is due to lower commodity prices and uh, an improving outlook of the Polish economy, which has also improved the uh, trade deficit and the current accounts. That seems to be the main driver of the nominal appreciation of this lottery against both the euro and the dollar. And the banking sector, in the environment of high inflation, high nominal rates and relatively weak market conditions, demand for lo loans remains low, as we see in volumes and new production especially in household lending. However, there is uh, a sign of hope, uh, a glimmer of hope, uh, some signs of improvement when it, uh, you look at the situation now compared to the end of last year. But to see a permanent improvement in lending, we need three things. Lower inflation, faster GDP growth, that is better market conditions, and eventually also lower interest rates. Thank you very much. Over to Mr. Aranda. Good morning. As already uh, mentioned by Pshamek, we deliver solid financial results in the first quarter 2023 in a context of low demand in loans, high inflation, and also overall uncertain environment. Net result amounting to 488 million sloty, up by 76% compared to the previous year. NII increased by 18% compared to the previous year, supported by the increase in the interest rate, and also good performance in fees and commission and net trading income. Expense remain under control, plus 1.3% compared to the previous year, excluding the BFG impact on IPS creation, plus 8.2% compared to the previous uh, year, meaning below inflation. Pass income ratio improved, reaching the level of 45.4%. We book additional provisioning related to the FX mortgage loan uh, portfolio, 234 million slotty. And finally, we benefit from the positive cost of risk in the first quarter, mainly explained by the forward-looking component update and good recoveries. Liquidity situation is very strong. Uh, customer deposit uh, increased by 8.3% compared to the previous year. And the good news related to the capital ratio, which improved by 38 bips compared to the previous year, reaching the level of 11.65% in terms of TRN ratio. Challenging situation in the area of the loans portfolio, which decreased by 0.2% compared to the previous year with two different dynamics, plus 2.4% for institutional customers. However, slowdown observed during the first quarter and minus 3.7% for individual loans portfolio and further decrease in the first quarter 2023 down by 2.8%. Second challenging area, which is not a new one, related to the CHF mortgage loan portfolio. We book additional 234 million slotty provision. Uh, coverage ratio increase and reach a level of 52.4%. The good news is that we are keeping on converting the loans with our customers. So we were able to negotiate with almost 3,000 customers and we have finalized the process uh, with our customers. Uh, 1.6 thousand settlement totally and fully uh, completed. Customer deposit, we get a high level and stable level of liquidity. Slight decrease in the first quarter 2023 but significant improvement compared to the previous year. What is important to highlight is that the cost of deposit have been stabilized uh, from Q4 2022 to Q1 2023. 
slight decrease uh, in the first quarter, but we have to mention that in terms of field spend on product, we are building uh, the scale, rebuilding the scale to some extent. As you can see, we are above the level we get last year at the end of the first quarter. So 6.6 .6 billion in investment product. So we are rebuilding the scale, which is positive in terms of fees in the future. NII, NII up by 20% compared to the previous year, slight decrease compared to the previous quarter. However, if we exclude the impact coming from the credit holidays adjustment, it will mean a slight increase by 3.6%. What is interesting is that we are able to improve the margin in Q1 compared to Q4 last year. Another good quarter, I would say, in terms of fees and commission, uh, record level, 225 million slot, including some one-off. So good quarter, but it doesn't mean that we're going to replicate in the future. Net trading income, another good quarter with a high level of uh, transaction with our customers, uh, lower valuation of share on IRS hedging related to the port, uh, loans portfolio, measure at fair value, and lower result on derivatives. But overall, uh, good performance in terms of net trading income. Operating uh, expenses, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, I would say that the costs are under control. Inflation is high. However, uh, the increase is moderate, so plus 1.3% compared to the previous year. And as I mentioned at the beginning, plus 8.3% if we exclude BFG, so below inflation, quarter to quarter, plus 4.2%. What is uh, obvious is that we are keeping on adjusting and changing the model of the bank, and as you can see, gradual decrease in the number of FTE. Um, Let's start with the cost of risk because we have a very specific situation in this quarter that the cost of risk is at the positive level. And this is the consequence of the quality in the selection of assets, a quality of monitoring, response in difficult situation, the way of restructuring the debt, but also very efficient recovery of uh, um, uh, loans or liabilities on loans that lost value. We are in such a situation that for the last three and four years, we have not noted any high value exposure that would uh, default, which uh, I don't think is anything negative. But of course, it's obvious that uh, this will not last uh, forever because in any bank, things like that do happen. The other part of the portfolio, which is uh, valued or assessed uh, collectively concerning the SME or retail part or personal finance, that performed in a very stable manner and therefore as a result, the predicted and the predictable and stable cost of risks were at a low level. And on top of that, we have seen a one-off effects where we released almost 64 million of provisions because or thanks to parameters and forward-looking components in our macro model. And also over the last few years, We've managed to restructure the debt of one of our big customers. We've received payment and therefore were able to release the provisions for 37 million. That such the situation, as I said, is not something that we expect to to be repeated, and it won't be the model where we have positive cost of risks. Now that needs to be very clearly stated. But uh, uh, the consequence of the efforts that I've mentioned is the positive cost of risk in the first quarter. 
if we look at the mortgage portfolio, uh, this uh, portfolio also performs very well from the point of view of credit risk. We've got other costs related to that, some legal requirement costs or credit holidays. But as regards the quality of this portfolio, I think it's very robust and sound and the cost of risk is very low for the Polish Zwoty portfolio and we can't see any risks in this portfolio that could um, lead to any higher uh, loss of value on those loans. And previously I also said that, that we selected the customers, we looked at the customers who potentially could be in trouble if it weren't for the credit holidays. And we, we had that very well diagnosed So once the credit holidays end this year. And if those customers were to have any problems with repayment, we have all that under control and properly diagnosed, so there is no risk related to that. If we're talking about the quality of the portfolio, we are getting to uh, to some very low levels, and this uh, quality line is something that I would like to stabilize. So getting 3%, the level of 3% in our market condition seems to be the minimum level that should be our goal we really shouldn't be trying to achieve 2.1 of zero because the bank has to take risk and uh, the consequence of taking on that risk uh, are some um, uh, non-performing loans, but the 3.2 for the bank is, is, is something that we are satisfied with. And for the first time in the nominal terms, we are below 3 billion which is also a very good result. And we uh, also sell our NPLs in the second and third quarter. So we are still, this is still ahead of us. Uh, so when we look at individual segments, uh, they also perform quality wise. We don't see any negative trends here. And the issue of staging and the cover, coverage for uh, those loans. We have very high coverage for stage two, which is uh, harder, uh, larger in volume, but it's stopped growing. In stage three, we have very good coverage, more than 60%. It may fall a little, decrease a little, uh, you can also see it um, on the uh, on this uh, graph. It happens once we uh, sell those and non-performing loans because uh, th there are a lot of provisions uh, created for those loans. And one, if if you look at the loans that are being paid. The, the, the provisions for those loans are not as, as big, but with time the provisions are then released and, and then created again and we get back to those 60%. So just to sum it up, uh, the situation from the point of view of um, credit risk, the situation is very stable, very predictable, and as things stand now, there are no huge risks. But of course, we have to monitor the situation very closely uh, from the point of view of economic situation, GDP growth, uh, to see whether micro and SMEs are not affected by the situation. We start seeing that in the micro company segment and to what extent that can have um, consequences on the ability of individual customers to pay um, their uh, loans, to pay, make their payments, to what extent we will have the uh, only technical unemployment or in Poland or, or a higher level actual unemployment. So we're monitoring the situation and adjusting our activities. Net results have been recognized as a financial equity, RWA decrease, and on top, the bonds, uh, the valuation of the bond portfolio improved. Uh, as a result, we are able to improve uh, the tier one ratio, so from 11.28% in Q for 2022 to 
65% uh, in the first quarter. So we are improving uh, the situation compared to the minimum capital requirement. And now we are getting to the end of our presentation. Two slides. The first that I would like to stop at a little, it is to illustrate the scale of the financial burdens related to regulatory requirements, external requirements, and the uh, Swiss franc issue which is something that has been affecting the bank since, uh, or the banking sector in general since 2016. The cost of uh, those burdens is about 8.7 billion zloty. So the cost that you can see on the slide should really make an impression because they show in how specific the reality market reality, but I'm not sure whether I should call the market to what extent. They just show how very specific is the environment in which we run our banking business, how difficult it is to operate in this environment in such a way uh, so as to, to systematically increase the level of uh, technology, of services to generate uh, good income above the cost of capital that is um, uh, vested in the bank. This slide, the, the purpose of this slide is also to give some hope that the awareness of the level of burden imposed on the banking se sector will um, get or reach those who, 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 who take those decisions because uh, uh, we need, also need to think about the disturbances in the banking sector in the United States as well. And it's also um, presented with the hope that um, those who can take decisions make sure they care that our banking sector remain in a robust and is able to continue to support the economy, taking into account all the risks and uncertainties that are still with us. Uh, especially in the time of economic revival, for which we uh, hope in the to come in the next year. But it's 8.7 billion zloty since 2016. In the case of our bank, which is not a, a very big bank, but what are the prospects? What is the outlook? Of course, we will talk more about it during the Q&A session. And, and, uh, Michal has told us about macroeconomic prospects and outlooks. Uh, there are a lot of signs indicating that inflation has slowed down, although the level of core inflation is still a reason for concern. Uh, we will probably not see a, a recession. It will just be a slowdown. What, have we, what we have been seeing so far is a very strong resilience of our customers, particularly companies, the resilience to the consequences of this slowdown. That it looks like the Polish corporate sector is entering this difficult time with significant accumulated profits, so it's well prepared to survive. This year is also an election year which of course uh, raises some concern and we are monitoring the reality. So I don't want to talk about politics, I, I'm not uh, doing in politics, but I hope that the electoral ideas of, uh, of the political scene will be reasonable, uh, responsible and taking into account medium and long term economic interests of Poland. Uh, risks um, uh, re related to that, maybe w with the franc, Swiss franc um, loans are serious. We are dealing with this, also creating pro pro provisions, uh, concluding um, uh, settlements. The VBOR issue, again, is something that is a reason for concern because it shows us that. Uh, anything can really be 
questioned. That's the reality we are now living in. I hope that a very strong voice of the regulators and institutions responsible for the stability of the financial uh, sector supporting integrity of fiber, plus uh, a number of expert opinions, that all that will uh, protect us from the situation uh, that would be similar to that with mortgage loans, that the situation will stabilize. But of course, the risk is still there. What is a challenge in itself is the replacement of the reference indicator from uh, VBOR to VRON, which is a very complex process. All banks are participating in that. All this is happening within the national uh, working group. But this is not really the topic for today's meeting, but we will continue doing what we uh, always do to improve the satisfaction of our customer, to uh, make efforts uh, and uh, strive for selective, reasonable growth, to continue being a leader in sustainable development and green financing. We will be managing the capital effectively. We will maintain our liquidity position at the safe level, at the same time optimizing the costs of this liquidity. And as regards the costs, we continue to be cost disciplines and we will continue doing that, particularly in the situation, in the conditions of high inflation. So that will be all as regards the presentation. And now let's go to the Q&A session. Adam Safu, ESB. Good afternoon. Three questions uh, or uh, requests for clarification. First, could you clarify the current status and outlook of corporate lending. You said uh, in micro firms you've seen some deterioration in the portfolio. How much has it deteriorated and how uh, do the different sectors do? Um, because I understand the situation may be diverse uh, from sector to sector. Question number two concerning the questioning of the VIBOR, the Viber benchmark. Have you seen uh, those claims and uh, what has been the outcome? Number three, congratulations on your ROE. Uh, do you think you can keep it up in the coming quarters? So let me talk first about the micro issue that's quite specific. When I say we see a growth, then if our impaired loans grow by 10, 15 million, that's still a growth, but it's marginal compared to the overall volume of our impaired loans. That was the only portfolio of impaired loans that grew. So it's not really happening. As for corporate lending, we haven't seen an increase. We actually reported a drop and we are not expecting this segment to report a growth. What I would like to point out as regards the different sectors, the construction industry and the costs of production in the construction industry, that is an issue. Regarding Wiber related claims, we have received some of them. They have not yet been resolved in any case. At a meeting held by the Polish Bank Association a while ago, we were told that there were four cases resolved in the sector. In all cases, the judgments were positive for the bank, two in the first and two in the second instance after an appeal. So that gives us hope that reason will prevail as regards that questioning of the Weiber benchmark. Return on equity, is. do you think you can keep it up? Well, we do not publish any forward-looking um, projections unless Jean-Charles would like to comment. I would suspend my judgment here. We have few information. First one, we have our target in our strategy, which have been disclosed. And when you look at Q1 performance, we have to keep in mind that 
uh, we benefit for few, uh, I would say one off. I mentioned them in terms of fees on commission and positive impact in terms of cost of risk. And I think we can easily assume that a business model with a positive cost of risk all over the time is not sustainable. So it's a way to some extent to, to, to adjust um, the ROE compared to the one we have in Q1, but it's obvious that our goal is always to improve our financial performance. And I would say the normalized one. Mamy... Tak, tutaj... Hubert Wigdowski with questions about the sector. First, credit holidays. Uh, there are rumors that uh, the credit holidays could be extended up to next year. What is your position? If the credit holidays in the current uh, shape are extended, which leads to some abuse because this system is used by people who don't really need that support. So is this possible and what happens then? Second, the Court of Justice of the European Union's judgment uh, to be published in June. Do you think it's going to be uh, in line with the opinion of the Advocate General, which is not very favorable for the banks? Are there any news? Is there any news? Finally, what about today's decision concerning the interest rates? Uh, what will the Monetary Policy Council decide? Do you think there's going to be any surprise there? Well, let me start from the very end. I don't think they will change the rates today. I'm looking at Michał. He's nodding, but uh, very modestly. Well, as regards your first uh, two questions, I don't feel competent enough to be a prophet. So we don't have a crystal ball on these two points. Regarding the uh, Court of Justice's judgment, the position of the Advocate General has uh, aroused a lot of uh, very uh, strong comments from commentators and from regulators. I do hope that the court will take a closer look at the issue uh, at stake. It is not at all evident that uh, the judgment should be in line with the opinion of the Advocate General. This is typically the case, but here now, the issue at stake is very significant, so I hope they will be very careful and they will consider the uh, very substantive arguments uh, of systemically important institutions, including the Polish Financial Supervision Authority. So the court will reflect and take a very reasonable position. On the issue of credit holidays, that is a point I have commented upon at prior occasions. The credit holidays that were implemented last year were a very bad idea, in my opinion. They allowed for a transfer of money from banks or their shareholders to a population of clients, regardless of their financial position, income level, etc. We know that the main beneficiaries were the holders of the biggest mortgage loans, which suggests they were the most affluent clients. As for credit holidays implemented in Poland, the European Central Bank has taken a position and so did the International Monetary Fund, that they were both very critical. Bear in mind that since 2016, We've had a borrower support scheme, which uh, was additionally uh, expanded last year. The idea here is to support those borrowers, mortgage borrowers, who are in real financial difficulty. Then there comes the 12% increase in uh, income across the economy. So on the one hand, the rates grew and uh, the cost of mortgage loans based on floating rates increased. On the other hand, nominal income of Polish households, including borrowers, also increased. If you put 
on top the burdens imposed on the sector. If you add the turbulences in the international banking sector and the general uncertainty, I hope that the credit holidays will not be extended. We know that the Minister of Finance is saying there have been no decisions. The decisions will be made mid-year. What those decisions will be, we do not know that, obviously. I can only say we hope those decisions will be rational, taking into account the broad context and the broad economic outlook and also the positions of international institutions on the credit holidays as they are. We will see what the outcome will be. Thank you. We have received some questions online. Yes, we have several questions from analysts and journalists. We have put them together into thematic modules. The first question. Starting in Q2, are you expecting a decrease of the net interest margin? What is the uh, trend in margins in different categories of loans? What is the um, sensitivity of your net interest income on, uh, with regard to the rates? So, few um, few elements. The first one, uh, as I explained at the beginning, we stabilize the cost of the deposit uh, from Q4 to Q1 2023. So, we are not expecting a uh, significant increase in the cost of the deposit. The goal is really to maintain and potentially to be better. In terms of loans, uh, uh, repricing has been done, but as usual, we are trying to improve as well this area. It will mean that I cannot share any forecast, it's obvious, and we are looking, but uh, the goal is, uh, let's say, at minimum, to maintain the level of uh, the level of margin and potentially being better. We'll have to look at also some parameters depending on the evolution of the market. In terms of uh, NII sensitivity, this information has been disclosed in the financial statement. So if 100 basis point up, it will be 272 million. If 100 basis point down, 222 million. Do you know why the deposit volumes in Poland have remained so strong, especially given the low interest rates on deposits? In your opinion, what would have to happen to, for the banks to compete more aggressively for deposits? And two other questions. What are your projections concerning an increase of interest costs this year? The banks are now over liquid and they are expecting inflation and rates to drop. Will they be trying to uh, cut the interest rates on deposits? Well, deposits have been growing faster than loans because when it comes to the generation of deposits, This has to be seen from the perspective of the credit of the public sector, including the public deficit or the public debt. And there are other sources which generate money, for instance, European funds. And last but not least, we still see a rebound as some deposits that uh, left the sector early last year when war broke out in Ukraine and uncertainty was very high are now making a comeback. And this money is now returning to the banking sector. So I think this explains the fast increase in deposit volumes which is much faster than lending would suggest. 
in the non-financial sector, the private clients. The cost of deposit, uh, the, I would say the answer is easy, will adapt to the reality. So if the over liquidity is staying in, in the banking sector, if no growth in the loans and if the rates are going down, I think the, the, the answer is yes, we will adapt and we will go down. Well, given the slowdown in the economy, a dropping demand for loans and very strong liquidity, it's hard to expect banks to pay more for deposits. Uh, I think um, the opposite trend should be expected. What is the potential of uh, maintaining the uh, NFC quarter after quarter? What are your expectations concerning the recent increase of fees? What is the reason for the quarter-on-quarter and year-on-year increase in fees on cards? What was the scale of the positive one-off in the NFC in Q1 2023? Okay, so, so many questions. So I'm going to start with, with the last one. We can uh, we can okay give some some range in terms of one off. Let's say from thirty to forty million thirty. So if you exclude um, this one off, you can get the normalized uh, level of fees and commission. One question mark, which is still open, is what will be uh, the real slowdown in the economy which will be translated in the, in the coming quarters on fees and commission. So maintaining 325, uh, I think, easily we can assume that it's not sustainable for Q2. Outlook na koszty ryzyka. The outlook for the cost of risk, the potential of positive changes to the model given the macro outlook. Has it been exhausted? In Q2, are you expecting to maintain a very good quality of your loan book? I'll take the second question first. I think if there's any significant change in the quality of our loan book quarter after quarter that wouldn't uh, uh, speak very well about us as an institution. So if there is any change, it is more long lasting. It takes place over a longer period of time. I remember in 2011, when many construction companies went bankrupt in Poland, then uh, impairment loans grew 2% across the banking industry, but that was a real one-off. In mid-May, you're asking us whether we can maintain that in Q2. Well, if I didn't know that, if I couldn't anticipate that, I wouldn't sleep well at night. I sleep well, so I don't think we will see a dramatic difference here, a dramatic change in Q2. What was the first question again? Your outlook of the cost of risk, the potential of positive changes to the model due to the macro outlook, has it been exhausted? Well, when it comes to the cost of risk, considering that in Q1, we heard that the quality of the loan book will not deteriorate, then the cost of risk should remain stable. Although we are not expecting in 2023 to have a positive cost of risk overall. When it comes to macro scenarios and their impact, this will depend on those scenarios so we cannot uh, tell today whether this positive impact has already been tapped to the full extent. If there are any adverse scenarios, we hope there won't be any adverse scenarios, but if we see a recession, the impact will be adverse. So I think in this case, we need to stay patient and we will see. Thank you.
Jaka skala portfolio? What's the scale of NPL portfolio will be subject to sale in Q2? Well, today I can't give you the uh, amount because we are now in the process uh, in a tendering process. I know what the amount, what is the amount that is included in the tendering procedure, but the procedure has not been completed yet. The price has not been set yet. It's not been agreed, and until that happens. Uh, we won't have a bank's decision as to which portfolios we're going to sell. Once we have the price, then we will take the decision about the sales, and we know what the f uh, actual volume it's going to be, which products, which loans, but it will definitely happen. Outlook uh, for operating expenses is 2023, including uh, person, personnel staff costs. One thing that uh, our goal is to maintain our cost evolution below inflation. This is our goal. And now the longer block of uh, questions related to uh, uh, Swiss franc loans, FX loans, it, it is a concern, the increase of number of lawsuits related to those loans in the Q1 of 2023. What can be the reason for this increase? Is it already the effect of the Advocate General's opinion? Or maybe we are still in to see this effect. Does the bank see the increase in uh, inquiries concerning credit record? Well, the first part of the question is pure speculation, really, because we don't, we can't have any scientific um, proof to confirm what I will see. But it seems that the Advocate General's opinion has contributed to the increase in the number of uh, uh, the litigations and also uh, requests for credit record that is needed to prepare the uh, claim, the lawsuit. We can see this increase, and this increase is visible in the entire market. What was the reason for increase of provision of franc uh, loans in the first Q 2023? And what part of that was devoted to settlements, was assigned for settlements, and what, which part to uh, litigation? but. Of the many explanations, it increased in a number of cases, the impact of the statutory interest uh, in, um, in the losses. And uh, the provision which has been booked is uh, related to the legal cases. Could you remind us whether settlements are concluded on the terms proposed by the head of the Finance Authority Supervision Authority, or are they individual, uh, individually negotiated uh, parameters? Generally, we negotiate those terms individually, but the guidance of the head of the uh, Financial Supervi Supervision Authority is our reference here. What's the percentage of litigation that uh, concerns the loans that have already been repaid? Whether after the decision uh, in SUE, uh, which it follows the opinion of Advocate General, we should expect uh, a one of uh, provisions for a franc, Swiss franc for um, loans? Take what the outcome of the decision. The most important parameter on our side is that we never assume in our model any remuneration for the bank. In in other words, we simply don't know what exactly the decision of the court will be, what exactly will be in it, so we can multiply the scenarios and trying to anticipate how many provisions and what level of provisions we will be creating after it's published. It's just too early to say that. But after that decision is issued, after this judgment is issued, we will look at it closely and the appropriate decisions will be taken. Can you con do you confirm the hypothesis, which uh, results from the big uh, data, that the 
franc, uh, uh, Swiss franc uh, loan holders, after they enter the process, they stop repaying their loans. Can you confirm that this is really the trend? Well, it's difficult to, to, to support such a thesis on the basis of the knowledge I have right now. And now uh, the remaining blocks of questions. What are the needs for debt issues to, uh, to meet the MRL requirements? Is expected by PNB Paribas for 2023? And does the bank plan MRL emissions for on the market, or will this, um, this issue be just ad addressed to the shareholders? MRL needs are in the range from two to three billion. That which will have to be calibrated depending on the evolution of the situation, and uh, it will be uh, done with the group. Thank you, Paribas. Is the bank uh, planning to participate in the subsidy program, uh, credit 2% or 2% loan? We are looking at, this, at those proposals, analyzing them, and we will soon be taking our decision. Can we count on a significant rebound in the sale of mortgage loans in second half of 2023? When will BNP go to uh, return to more active sale of mortgages? We right now continue our prudent, very selective policy related to mortgage loans. If this changes, we will definitely let you know. What is the dynamics of different categories of loans that the bank is expecting this year? Well, you know that we don't provide this type of forecast, particularly split into different loan categories. We just don't provide this data. Should we expect? Should it be expected? Should the sale of BNP shares be expected because of uh, meeting the obligations uh, imposed by the Financial Supervision Authority? This is not a question to us. That is the management board of BNP Paribas Poland. This should be really addressed. This question should be addressed to our majority shareholder. What is the negative evaluation of bonds, which is included in Tier 1 funds? Do you see any uh, risks for agro portfolio in connection with the current situation uh, related to import of food products from Ukraine. We can't see such a risk because the context is really a turbulence, a confusion, whereas Polish agriculture in general is in a very good condition. Last year was very, very good for the sector, a record-breaking year, in fact, and right now nothing, there are no signs to, uh, to show that this year is going to be different. So this is more related to the media reports. Let me also add that with the appreciated um, loans, the, uh, the, the, the payments is very good with uh, revolving loans. Uh, in fact, what happens is that if the loan is to be renewed, some customers just decide to close the revolving loan and just um, pay because they have the surplus of, of cash. So uh, that's, that's what happens. And that was the last question. This was the last question. That was the last one, or are we still expecting the last question? OK, so if there are no more questions, let's face it. So now we would like to thank you for your attention, thank you for your question, and wish you all the best, and see you next time, that is, next quarter. Goodbye.